All right, so what is up guys? In the last video, we went ahead and created our create habit item fragment, which allowed us to actually insert some habits into our database. And in this video, we will work on displaying that information into a recycler view. So let's get started immediately. And the first thing we're going to do is close our create habit item. Then we're also going to go to our res folder, go to the navigation and click on main underscore nav. And inside here, all we have to do is go ahead and click on update habit and then go to this argument section and click on the small plus icon. And we're going to give it the name of selected habit. And then we have to go ahead and pick a type, which is going to be a custom passable. And as you may recall, earlier when we created our data class, we also defined it as a passable class. So all we have to do is click on the suggested class right here and click on OK. And we don't have to pass any default values, so just click on add. And that's all we have to do in our navigation class. And then right after that, we can go ahead to our habit list folder and right click on that because we are going to create a new package, which is just going to be the adapter for the habit list. We're just going to call it adapters. And inside here, we're going to create a new Kotlin file class and we are going to name it the habit list adapter. Well, let's just get started by typing in class habit list adapter and that's going to extend a recycler view dot adapter that we need to open some angle brackets and inside these angle brackets we want to write in habit list adapter and my view holder which we will create shortly and then we can turn that into a block and immediately it will want us to implement some members which of course is the create view holder method the on bind method and the get item count method and we'll just implement all of those so we get rid of the error. And right at the top, before we do anything, we're going to create a variable of habit list, which is going to equal an empty list of type habit. And we can import that. Then we have to go ahead and create an inner class, which is going to be called my view holder, exactly the same as the one up here. And it's going to take an item view of type view as a parameter and it's going to return a recycler view dot view holder with an item view inside and let's not forget to import our view and inside here we're going to create an initializer block and the first thing we want to do is type in item view to get a reference of the item view and we are going to get our card view for each item and set an on click listener for that. So each time the user taps on an item, we will be taken to the update fragment. And the first thing we'll get in here is the position, which will equal an adapter position. So we know exactly what we're clicking on. And let's also create a tag real quick. So we'll type in value tag, and that's going to equal our habit list adapter. Then inside here, we can log a few things. So the first thing we should log is that our item was clicked at the position of position, so we know exactly where we clicked it. And also just to find out which ID we're clicking on, we're gonna type in log D again. And inside here, we can just type in ID, and we're going to interpolate with a pair of curly brackets, and it's gonna take habit list at the position of position, the one that we clicked at, dot ID. This is just to give you a general understanding on which ID you clicked on, and then you will understand how to manipulate that data later. Then we're going to create an action, which is called value action, and that's going to equal a habit list directions dot action habit list to update habit item. And as you can see, we are not allowed to pass anything as an argument. It says there's nothing that it's expecting, and that is because we did not build the project. So we need to rebuild it and we will wait for that to rebuild before we pass in our arguments. And just in case you're confused about what I'm talking about, I'm talking about in our navigation folder, we created an argument that says selected habits and that will be the data object that we created earlier. So if we go to models, you will see that we define this as a possible item. And that is what we want to pass in from our adapter to the update item fragment. So every time we click on an item, it will take that item from here and pass it on to the update fragment so we can edit it. But anyway, we just need to wait for this to finish building and then we can move on. Perfect. And as soon as it is done rebuilding, you'll see that it will give us this error message that says no value passed for parameter selected habits. And that is exactly what it's expecting over here. So now we can finally go ahead and write in habits list and pass in whatever we get at the position we click on it. And that's all we have to do for our action. Then we want to navigate to the update fragment. So we're going to type in item view dot find nav controller. And we are going to type in navigate. And since we created an action, all we have to do is to pass in the action. So this action will take care of taking us from the list fragments at the selected item 
and passing it to our update fragment. And that's all we have to do inside the inner class. So now we can move on to the on create view holder and add a little bit of code inside there. And since we need to return a view holder, we need to type in return my view holder. Now we need to pass in a layout inflator dot from parent dot context. And we need to inflate our item view. So we're going to type in dot inflate, give it another pair of parentheses and then r.layout.recyclerHabitItem. Then we want to type in parents and pass in false. And as you can see, that's all we need to do for the view holder. Then we're just gonna skip to get item count because it's a very simple line of code. So we'll just type in return habit list dot size and that will take care of getting the item count then on bind view holder we have quite a bit to write so the first thing we want to do is get the current habit and we will type in value current habit which is going to equal the habit list at the position it's at then we have to create a ton of updates so the first one we want to update is holder dot item view dot image view underscore habit icon and we want to set the image resource to the current habit dot image ID. So that will take the drawable and it will just set the icon that we have selected from the bottom, whether that be the smoking icon, the tea icon, or the fast food icon. Then we're gonna create a holder dot item view dot TV underscore item title dot text. And we want to update this text as follows. So we'll interpolate and we will get the current habit dot habit title. Then let's create the description. So holder dot item view dot TV underscore description dot text. And that is going to equal the current habit dot habit description. And we can actually simplify the title by getting rid of the curly brackets and the interpolation because it is a string after all. I don't know why I included that, but uh, we'll just fix that right now. Then we should get the time elapsed. So we're gonna type in holder dot item view and we're going to update our tv underscore time elapsed dot text and that's going to take our calculations object and it's going to calculate time between dates so it's going to get the last date we inserted and it's going to get the current time and tell us how much time has elapsed between that given frame of time so we'll just pass in current habits dot habit start time then there's only one more text view that we should update and that is the day we created the habit so holder dot item view dot tv underscore item created timestamp dot text and that's going to equal a string so first we want to type in since and then we can interpolate and write current habit dot habit start time and this will take care of updating all our text views and the icon so that is done and then there's finally one more method we have to create which is going to be a set data method and it's going to take a habit of type list of habits and inside here we're going to refer to the habit list that we find at the top of this class. And that's going to be the new habit list. Then we just want to notify that everything has changed. So we'll type in notify data set changed. And usually you wouldn't want to do this in a larger app because you would only want to notify the item that was changed, which means if you change item three, you would only want to tell the program that item three has changed so it wouldn't have to refresh the whole page. But in this example, since it is a very small project, this is absolutely fine and we will just use this approach. But with that being said, we have successfully created the habit list adapter, and now we can move on to the actual habit list. So we can finally display the information that we have entered. So right below the class, we want to create a few private late init variables. And the first one is going to be the habit list, which is gonna be of type list of habits. And I believe it wants us to import habit, so we'll just do that. Then we need to create another private late init var, which is going to be our habit view model, which will be of type habit view model. And then one more, it's gonna be a private late init var named adapter. And that's gonna be of type habit list adapter. And then we can go ahead and assign a value to our adapter. And to do this, we'll just type in adapter equals a habit list adapter. Then we will get our recycler view with the habits and set the adapter to this adapter. Then finally, we just have to call the recycler view again and get the layout manager and set that to a linear layout manager with the context of context. And that will take care of our adapter. Next, we need to create a view model and this will take care of displaying the information and if there's any changes, updating the information. So to do this, we'll type in habit view model and that's going to equal a view model provider. And we're going to pass in this as the owner and it's going to get our habit view model class.java. Then we're gonna type in habit view model dot gets all habits. 
and we want to observe if anything changes here. So inside here, we can just pass in a view lifecycle owner and then pass in an observer, which will allow us to observe whatever happens when we get all of our habits. And the first thing we're gonna do inside here is refer to our adapter and we are going to set the data, which is going to be the list and we can just pass in it as the argument because that will refer to the current list of items. And then we also want to update the habit list, which is going to also be it. And you'll see what we will use this for later. Now we also have to add a check to see if the recycler view is empty. So we're gonna type in if it is empty, then we're gonna type in RV habits dot visibility is going to equal view dot gone. And we are going to get our text view which is the empty view that we want to display and type in visibility equals view dot visible. Else we're gonna do the complete opposite. So we can just copy and paste that and write view visible and view gone. And that will take care of displaying a message in case there's nothing added to the list. So the user doesn't get confused and understands that the list is empty. And just to make this a little bit easier to understand, I'm just gonna type in view model and adapter. And right below that we should set has options menu to true. And right below that, let's add a swipe to refresh action, which will take our swipe to refresh view that I've included in our recycler view layout. And we're just gonna set an on refresh listener. Since this app does not automatically refresh or check for updates in the time, it will be up to the user to refresh the screen manually if they want to see the most recent update. So we're gonna just type in adapter.setData and we're just gonna pass in the habit list which is the most current data. Then we will set swipe to refresh is refreshing and set that to false or else you'll have that loading icon display forever. And there's only one more thing to do before we can actually test this app and see what we've done so far. And that is call our on create options menu to make sure we get that little rubbish bin at the top. And inside here, we just want to type in inflator.inflates and we're going to inflate our r.menu.inflate nav menu and that's going to be for our main navigation and then we need to override on options item selected as always and we always want to return super on options item selected so we can just leave that there but we want to also specify that when the item dot item id is equal to r dot id dot nav underscore delete then we will want to delete everything in the recycler view so we'll type in habit view model dot delete all habits and it appears I've made another mistake. As you can see where it says dot delete all habits, it is expecting an argument. So let's just go back to our habit view model and get rid of that parameter because it is not necessary. Then we can go back to our habit list. The error will be gone. Although I've spotted one more error, which is we forgot to pass the menu in the on create options menu. And then we can rock and roll. We can actually go and run the program and see our items display on the screen. So let's click on run. So if everything worked correctly, you should see the item that we created from the last episode, which was quitting coffee. As you can see, it says yes, it says since the date we picked, and it has quit coffee. So everything is displaying nicely. You can even see the icon of the T in the background. And just to make sure this is actually working, let's go ahead and click on the plus symbol. We're gonna type some random text. It doesn't really matter what you write. We're gonna pick a date and let's go down, let's say 2015, select the 13th. And we're gonna pick a time, which will be five in the morning. And we'll just make it 5.30 in the morning and the smoke symbol. And we'll click on confirm. Then you'll see the message at the bottom that says habit successfully created. And if we go ahead and rerun this app, you'll see that all the data will persist and will remain in the same exact order as we have created it. So there I go restarting the app. Everything is exactly the way we want it to be. And also if we click on the item, it will take us to the update habit fragment, but we have not inserted the necessary code to retrieve the data yet. So we cannot update any items yet. And this is just a placeholder. So we will do that in the next video. And yeah, it's just, it's a great success that this actually worked. I'm very happy we made it this far. And, and there's actually one more thing to check. And that is if we go to our options menu and we delete everything, will everything be deleted? Let's find out. And yes, we have everything deleted. And as you can also see, our empty view is looking great. It tells us to add a habit because there's nothing there. And you can customize that however you like. And in the next video, we'll be going over how to update the items. And finally, we will have the final video, which will be covering how to create the intro screen to give the user a little tutorial on how to use the app. But so far, so good. 
We have a working app. And as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next tutorial. See you.